Hey, welcome back. In this video, just going over another example on frames for 2D statics problems, but in this case, we don't have any applied forces acting on a frame. We just have an applied moment. It kind of changes the problem a little bit, but there's some tricks that we can do to uh, to simple, or to solve this problem. So we're looking for the reaction forces at A and C. And you'll notice that C is a roller and A is a fixed end support. So here we have the free body diagram for the whole structure. So you'll notice because of this fixed end here, uh, we actually do get a, a moment here as part of that reaction, and at, the, at C, because of this roller, we don't actually get any horizontal reaction. It's purely a vertical reaction that is normal to that surface that the roller is sitting on. So based on this, we can get our sum of forces in the x direction, y direction, and sum of moments about some point for the whole structure. And you'll see here that obviously there's only one, uh, we've only identified one horizontal force here, so that uh, AX is going to have to be zero. And then here we have sum of forces in y, ay, and cy. Those have to net out to zero, and then just a sum of moments. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, we're not able to solve the problem based on this. So let's go and draw our exploded diagram where we'll get the free body diagrams for each member. So now we just have to figure out uh, what's going on here at point B and how these two members are pushing or pulling on each other. Um, and the way that we can find that out, actually, in this type of problem where we only have this applied, uh, externally applied moment. If we put a force in any direction uh, that has any sort of x component, then this member wouldn't be in static equilibrium because it would have the tendency to uh, translate in that direction. So basically the only force that this orange member can exert on this teal member, uh, keeping this teal member in static equilibrium, uh, is just the equal and opposite force to the cy. So basically it just has to, there has to be an equal and opposite cy pointing down here. And then obviously the, the equal and opposite on that other end, on the, on the other free body diagram at the same point, uh, we would have that CY. So looking at this, um, this, uh, this member won't have any tendency to translate in the horizontal direction because there's no horizontally applied forces. And now, because the CY is going to cancel this out, it won't have any tendency to translate up or down. We just need to figure out the magnitude of this force uh, in order to get the uh, this force couple to create a 15 kilonewton moment in the opposite direction. And you'll see this these two forces uh, would, uh, if they were just applied to this object, it would give the tendency to rotate the opposite the sense that this moment is is trying to force it to go. So basically, the moment caused by the force couple here just has to equal 15 kilonewton meters. And the way that we can do that is we can we know this distance here uh, between their lines of actions. It's two meters. So we just have uh, CY times 2 meters, and, and that's going to be equal to 15 kilonewton meters to get static equilibrium. Uh, and that means that CY is just going to be equal to uh, 7.5 kilonewton meters. Awesome. So we can even label that on here if we want, just to help. So this is 7.5 kilonewtons. Sorry, not kilonewton meters. What am I talking about? It's it's a force magnitude, it's kilonewtons. Uh, this CY here is 7.5 kilonewtons, so that means this guy here also equal and opposite, 7.5 kilonewtons. And then looking at the, the free body diagram of this member, in order for it to be in static equilibrium, uh, the sum of forces in the y direction has to cancel out. So we know, well, first of all, the sum of forces in the x was zero. Uh, AY here just has to be 7.5 kilonewtons pushing down, so we can we can even just label, we'll just change the, the orientation on that arrow so I don't have to bother writing negative. Uh, so there we go, AY would just have to be 7.5 kilonewtons downward. And then the only other thing we have to find out is the, uh, is the moment here, and we can just do the sum of moments uh, there's a few ways we can do it, but one of them is we can just take the sum of moments about some point, let's say point A, uh, and we're going to get basically MA is going to give it the clockwise sense or clockwise rotation, and then CY here uh, would give it the counterclockwise, so we'll bring it onto the other side of the equation, and we'll just have uh, CY, that's 7.5 times that distance, which was 3 meters, right, 7.5 kilonewtons times 3 meters, so we're going to find that MA is equal to 22.5 uh, kilonewton meters, and, and it is in that sense. So there we go, that's, that's the answer. We found uh, the reactions at A, so AX is 0, AY is 7.5 kilonewtons down, 
Ma is 22.5 kilonewtons clockwise. And then the reaction here at C, the only reaction is just that vertical uh, CY there, which is 7.5 kilonewtons. Now, if you're curious too, just to check if you got the right answer, we can come back and look at this black text here, uh, which is the set of equations that we we derived for uh, the whole structure. And just to make sure we didn't screw something up, we can check. Uh, even though I guess they're not really they're not independent from each other, um, but you can just plug and chug just to for your own peace of mind. If we put MA in here, uh, that's uh, 22.5 kilonewton meters plus 15 that gives us 37.5 and if you divide 37.5 by 5 it leaves us here with CY is 7.5 so yeah it looks like we did this problem right and uh, there you go that's just kind of a cool example that I like uh, which uh, can be a little daunting at first but uh, when there's no applied forces just an applied moment but uh, there you go that's that's how you would solve a problem like that